Right. Uh, so I'd say there are lots of cases where publish subscribe is viable. Um, the, the most common area is in a microservices type of architecture where you have kind of a peer-to-peer -peer relationship between these microservices rather than a request-response relationship where you know one of them could be publishing an event of type A which separate subscriber handles that and it publishes an event of type B and somebody else subscribes to that. And it could very well be that these types of events propagate and ultimately come back over time to the original publisher. So anytime that you have a case where uh, you have uh, strong business responsibilities that are able to be autonomous, that's a really good place where PubSub will work well. There are a lot of queuing systems out there that support publish subscribe natively. Uh, some of them are more uh, focused on one platform than another. So uh, RabbitMQ, for example, is an up-and-coming, very popular open source type of queuing system that supports Publish Subscribe. Uh, it's based on Erlang, which might not be so uh, accepted in, say, Windows, Microsoft-oriented type of environments. Uh, but let's say on the Linux side of things, it has you know, much stronger adoption. When we look at uh, publish subscribe frameworks that are popular on the Microsoft platform, uh, I'd say that while MSMQ as a queuing system doesn't support publish subscribe out of the box, there are frameworks like in Service Bus, like Mass Transit, like Rebus, that sit on top of MSMQ and make it possible to do PubSub on the Microsoft platform just as well as, say, doing Java, Linux on top of RabbitMQ. The primary differences between these uh, queuing systems often has to do with how they get set up for clustering and for high availability, their performance type of uh, characteristics. So each one is different from the other in some way. Uh, also in terms of feature set, MSMQ supports distributed transactions, RabbitMQ does not. So there are a lot out there, and one of the things that I mentioned in my talk is things that developers need to be aware of when selecting a given queuing system to support their publish subscribe. The thing is, like uh, in so many technology type of environments, uh, context is king. So let's say somebody wants to build a chat type system. In a chat-based environment, the ability to support a very large number of connected users with low latency is really important. Whereas the durability, the transactionality isn't really so important in that domain. However, and in that type of context, a queuing system like ZeroMQ would be fantastic. MSMQ takes a different set of contexts and says, well, we're going to make everything transactional and durable and reliable and fault tolerant, which doesn't really make sense for the chat domain, but it makes a lot of sense for business systems. So that there really is no ubiquitous best because ultimately when you're making the implementation choices in the technology, you kind of have to decide, well, what am I optimizing for? And if you try to do everything, that just means you're going to do everything really poorly. So you're going to be the worst durable solution and the worst non-durable solution. So I'm not, you know, I, I have enough experience to know that there is no ever going to be a best for everything. And it really is, so let me put it this way. In terms of the, the service bus technology that I built and that my company now supports, we support multiple underlying queuing technologies. So we support both MSMQ and RabbitMQ and a bunch of others so that whoever is using the software can decide, well, I'm going to program to our API, but now give me a plugin that is suitable for the transactional performance type of needs that I have, and that can be different in different cases. But at least the API type of experience is going to be roughly the same. So that's what we ended up doing, but we're not going to write our own queuing system. <laughs>